What's up everybody, it's Simon from Lake Hub. I've been having such a blast teaching my kids how to fish and I wanted to share the easiest way to get your kids into fishing. It's really not that complicated. Let me show you. So for starters, you wanna pick the right kind of rod and reel setup. Um, this is the classic teach your kids how to fish reel. This is a spin casting reel. Um, this is an off brand, but Zebco is like the classic, right? And if you're not familiar with how they work, you push the button and then let it go as you're going forwards. Every kid can, can just master this and, and have a lot of fun fishing with this style of a reel. Um, smaller is better. So if you, if you are going to go, um, I mean, you could go straight to a, an open spinning reel like this. Uh, my kids are having a good time learning how to do this. They feel, they feel very official. It feels more official than this because this is what dad uses. So um, they like this too. If you're going uh, with a spinning reel and, or when you're stepping up from a spin caster to a spinning reel, just make sure that you start with a micro light. This is a micro light. So this reel is a lot smaller than a conventional reel, which would be about that big. So one of the differences in a micro light versus conventional size rod is the height. This is a five foot rod. There's a lot less back and forth action that you need so it's just easier for kids to manage. It's also, it's namesake, it's light. It's a light rig. It's for, you know, light line, light lures, light fish, but it's also a light rig altogether. It's just easier to handle. And the smaller reel is, is just that. It's, it's smaller, lighter, easier to handle. It's also the distance between where you have to grab the line from here to here. This is something I learned from having kids. Didn't really think, think this through ever, um, but this distance, their fingers are only so long. So they can only reach so far to be able to grab the line and hold it to open the bale. And a micro light is what you have to do with kids with smaller hands. So they'll get into the bigger rods when they get older, but best thing to do is to start here, graduate up to here. And then as they get older, they can just, the rods can grow with them. As far as your tackle, I like to start kids off with live bait. You know, um, fishing lures is fun, but when they're learning to cast, they can't cast very far. If you're casting for them, it's just nonstop cast, hand off, reel in, cast, hand off, reel in. It's nonstop. So what I like to do to start kids f out fishing and to sort of start to teach them the patience and appreciation for fishing is with bait. So here's, here's all the tackle you need. This is like the cheapest setup you can possibly ever imagine. You just need a hook on the end, a little treble hook, or a smaller bait hook. You can also use little mosquito hooks. Any small hook will work. What we're trying to do is we're just trying to get them into any fish, and usually that's going to be panfish, bluegill, red ear, green sunfish, that sort of thing. A little fish about this size. Trust me, any fish on a line is going to be fun for kids. Next, a little split shot. So this is a little kind of Pac-Man kind of device, right? It's just a little chunk of lead and you just squish it shut and you can, you can pinch these open to open it back up. If you can't do it, you can bite on it or use pliers and open it back up, take it on and off your line. I usually just put that, I don't know, maybe three or four inches above the hook. All you're trying to do is get the bait under the bobber, which leads me to the bobber, you can use any bobber. I like to use these kind of smaller, you know, it's about the, I don't know, three quarters of an inch. It's almost an inch. It's a smaller size with a little weight on the bottom. I like that because it's easier for kids to cast. Adds a little bit of weight to the whole rig, which just makes it easier to flick out there. And uh, so what you do is it's, there's a spring on the inside. So you push one side up, hook that side on the line, flip it over, make sure that that's the bottom side, right? And then, and then you grab this and then do the top. I'm trying to do it one-handed, but you get the idea. So you just push it through and get it hooked on both sides so you want both sides on the line so that it sits straight up and down and this weight will be on the bottom. And you might do that a foot and a half, two feet above your terminal tackle. For bait, you can really use anything. 
I mean, you can use any little chunk of meat, piece of hot dog, bologna, a little chunk of ham, anything like that. Any of your leftovers, any leftover meat, cut up into little chunks, just big enough to put on the hook. Of course, worms. Worms are classic, right? Can't go wrong with worms. In fact, if you want a full end-to-end -end outdoor activity, have the kids find their own worms or grubs and then fish with those. That's one. My kids love that because they just love like digging and exploring and stuff anyway. But there's just something extra special about digging up your own bait and then catching your own fish with the bait that you dug up. The kids really love that. So earthworms, um, night crawlers, you know, little, little tiny worms, anything that you can dig up in the ground, grubs, white grubs, whatever. Fish will eat all those. But you can also never go wrong with crappie nibbles. These things are awesome. So they're just little, little white smelly chunks. <laughs> That's all they are. They're like little chunks. Um, if it's a treble hook, I put one on each tip. If it's a, a convention or kind of a conventional bait hook, then I'll maybe like put three on the hook or something like that. Um, you can also tip, um, you know, your jigs and swim baits with these to put a little scent in the water if you're crappie fishing. It's a nice little tip for you. But these will catch fish anywhere all the time. Trout, panfish, um, catfish, small bass. I've caught everything on crappie nibbles. So I always have a jar that's reasonably fresh. You know, these are not like hard. They still smell, they have a smell to them. Um, and I think it's like three, three bucks, something like that for a jar of these. Uh, endless hours of entertainment <laughs> with crappie nibbles. It's a full jar. You, you won't use all of these before they dry out and go bad. So um, yeah, don't be shy with these. If some fall off, put some more on, get that scent in the water crappie nibbles that's a good tip right there now as far as teaching your kids how to cast the best way to do that is to just clip a bobber on the end of a line with no hook or anything else and go do it on the lawn go find a patch of grass go to your park um, whatever find an open area with no bushes no trees or anything like that and just start showing them they they have to feel it they have to feel it out I mean you can give them little pointers like let go a little sooner, let go a little later, go a little higher, not so sidearm or not over the top or whatever. Um, so you can work on those details with them, but they just, repetition is what they need. That's really what they need. So just clip a bobber on, those little weighted bobbers are great for learning how to cast. Cause again, they put a little bit of weight on there that helps them feel it, that helps them feel like kind of the release point and just practice, practice, practice. And, um, you know, put, throw, throw your hat down on the grass and say, try to, try to hit the hat, you know, make a game out of it. Um, just keep doing that. You don't need it. It doesn't need to be a long period of time, a couple minutes. They like doing it. Uh, my kids just love doing that. They love going out into the grass and messing around. That's how they're learning. I've got a proud dad moment to share with you. So my oldest, you know, just about every fish that he's caught that's brag worthy has been, I hooked it, handed it off to him right so we're fishing like texoma and we're kind of striper fishing we found a good shoreline spot um, don't have a boat but we found a good shoreline spot that's close enough to a channel and so we're you know we're fishing we caught a large mouth that way you know i hooked it handed it off to him and he reeled it in at dawn um, well after fishing for a little while we see this school of striper and they're they're too far to reach but um man it's it's one of those mad just big schools just tails slapping water you know look like it just looked bananas and 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 i was telling him i was like look if that school comes into us cast right in the middle of it right so finally it starts to move towards us and we're like man we're gonna be able to fish the school we're gonna be able to fish a school of striper from the shore and so we're getting excited and i cast right out in the middle of it and i hook up and i say hey bud and i hand it off to him and he waves me off he says no I'm going to cast and I'm going to catch my own fish. And so I'm like, okay, bud. And I'm reeling it in. And sure enough, he casts out and he hooks up and he reels it in and he lands it himself because I couldn't help him. And so he, he fished and landed. He called me off and he threw it out there. This, this is just this summer. Oh my gosh. That was such a great moment. It was such a great moment for him to wave me off. Like, no, 
I'm not catching a fish that way. So uh, those exciting moments, um, he's just coming into his own, you know, fishing wise. It's just so great. I love it. So don't miss out on those great opportunities. Get out there, catch some fish with those kids, and we'll see you outside.